वेलकम टू लेक्चर फोर्टी वन विच इज ऑन प्री प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग डेटा सो हियर वी विल टॉक अबाउट द एटमोसफेरिक करेक्शन बिकॉज द एटमोसफेयर इज डिग्रेडिंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ द रिमोट सेंसिंग इमेज सो लेट अस लर्न वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ द एटमोसफेयर हियर नाउ इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस स्लाइड आई हैव शोन अर्लियर ऑल्सो वट आर द डिफरेंट प्रोसेसिस इन्वॉल्व when we are acquiring the image so this slide shows that there is a source of energy which is the sun which is illuminating the earth surface and when this energy is traveling to the ground object which is see there is an intervening atmosphere so b is indicating here the atmosphere where the radiations are traveling from the source to the ground and returning back again from object on the earth surface to the sensor so d is a sensor which is fitted in the mounted in the satellite so there is a atmosphere during the travel of the radiation from the source to the object and object to the sensor and this atmosphere is playing very very important role so when we are talking of the what are the processes you are aware is scattering is taking place here you are aware absorption is taking place in this and there is a transmission activity which is taking place so we have to understand now what is the role on the quality of the image you know what is the role on the digital number of the image so when i have the digital data what will be the Uh, effect of this atmosphere if the atmospheric conditions are not favorable if they are poor then my image quality would be poor and in digital image processing i have the provision i have the flexibility to improve the quality but if the data is available in the hard copy format then it has to be analyzed as such there is no way we can improve the quality of the data so this is what you have to understand that digital data has the advantage that you can apply corrections or you can improve the quality of the data so we are actually now dealing with the role of the atmosphere on the satellite image and when we look at this there is a term called radiometric corrections so the radiances which are measured by the sensor systems because now this is traveling from the object to the sensor systems so the uh, the change in the radiance or um, radiance measurement would be affected by change in the illumination conditions so if the scene illumination condition is changing uh, it is may might be because of the sun elevation is changing it is because of the atmospheric conditions are changing so very much related to the atmospheric conditions some day may be a good sunny day some day may be a cloudy or a rainy day or a foggy day we won't get the same quality of the image particularly in the visible part of the spectrum then viewing geometry is also very important viewing geometry of the sensor system is important then what are the characteristics of the sensor so that is also very very important whether we have um, scanning mechanism whether we have uh, push broom type whether we have the line scanners so this is all depend upon the characteristics of the sensor systems to capture the image so in other words what we are saying is that the quality of the image or the contents in the image is very much dependent on these parameters the illumination conditions the atmospheric conditions prevailing at that time the viewing geometry of Uh, the area what was the view angle and the sensors which is deployed actually to capture that now it depends upon the haze also sun elevation and earth and sun distance so these are other parameters on which the radiometric quality would depend and we have to apply the corrections now radiometric corrections when we are applying to the data that means it is counteracting the sensor and the processing effects the atmospheric effects the topographical effects what are the topographical effect the shadow 
due to the topography you will have lots of lot of shadow in the image and it is difficult actually to identify the objects within the shadow region because they will appear on a black and white image the darker shade and uh, we will fail actually to identify the objects just below that. So, these corrections are required to be applied. We have to understand the effect of atmosphere, effect of topography, effect of the sensor system and corrections are applied and for each band and then we have to make the image usable. So, in order to apply the radiometric correction, let us understand uh, this particular curve where wavelength is drawn on x axis and the brightness value what we call the digital number is drawn on the y axis. So, here when we look at this now uh, from visible part of the spectrum 0 0.5 micrometer to 1.1 micrometer only that area has been shown here and uh, in this area if you look at the brightness value there are uh, lower part of the spectrum where the um, brightness values are more because the scattering is more. So, if you remember the lecture on scattering the lower wavelength region is scattering much more in the atmosphere as compared to the higher wavelength region. But if we go to the higher wavelength region area you can see the absorption is more. So, when the absorption is more then the, the object will not appear brighter. So, it will appear to me a darker object. So, brightness value here will be reduced in the longer part of the wavelength region and the brightness value would be increased in the shorter wavelength part of the region. And it is primarily due to scattering in the lower wavelength region and it is primarily in the longer wavelength region is primarily due to the absorption phenomena which are taking place. Now, if we see the reflectance which is coming from the object to the sensor system, it is a function of several things here which are shown in this diagram. So, uh, the reflectance is directly coming from the target, the reflectance is now you know deviating and then reaching to the target, the incident is deviating and then there is a deviation at the target level itself. So, what we call as the R1 which is shown in the first diagram this is atmospheric irradiance. It is not striking to the object, it is somewhere above the object and then it is reflected back and we are getting actually the reflectance uh, captured by the sensor system. So, that is called the atmospheric irradiance in case of the 1 figure number 1. In figure number 2 the reflectance outside the target which is scattered into the path R2 as you can see that now it is not actually moving in a straight line to the sensor system. So, this is shown by the path R2. See the third figure which we call as a diffuse atmospheric irradiance because the uh, it is scattered the incident ray is scattered before reaching to the object to the target. And fourth one is the multiple scattering which is taking place at the surface of the atmosphere and this is atmospheric interaction R4. So, these are the four possible ways through which the reflectance interacting with the atmosphere. Now, this radiometric corrections are uh, important. We have to apply these corrections to remove the effect of the scene illumination because sometimes you know we are dealing either with the multi temporal images of the same area. So, my study area is same and I have multi temporal images taken different times of the. So, the scene illumination conditions are different. So, we have to actually uh, remove that effect of the scene illumination because if the illumination is better the scene would appear brighter and if the illumination was not good in the subsequent scene that uh, feature would appear dull. 
so there will be a difference in the reflectance value and that will change my classification that will bring the error into my classification so there could be a different view geometry there could be a different atmospheric condition there could be a sensor noise or response when we are dealing with the multi temporal images but many times we are dealing with a large number of images in order to study large area more than one image so if i am taking more than one image and large number of images are there and want to create the mosaic and then carry out the geo referencing and analysis from that then again also we have to apply radiometric correction because my view, viewing geometry and scene illumination condition i have to make same mathematically so this will vary now depending upon my the sensor systems or the platforms or the conditions which are prevailing at the time of the data collection so it's uh, very common when we are dealing with multiple scenes it's very very common that we find uh, this kind of a situation so we have to apply the correction so that we can compare the images of the different sensors or different dates or different times so the images could be taken by different sensor also so they may have this difficulty so whenever we are dealing with one single image more than several images or images taken at different times of the same area then the radiometric correction is important to apply so we are what we are doing is uh, we are converting or calibrating the data to a known absolute radiation if we know the absolute value of a particular feature then we can calibrate actually the reflectance value which is available in my satellite image which is affected due to the atmospheric condition and then try to uh, apply the correction in the entire data so we'll understand this subsequently in the lecture so what will be the effect of the atmosphere in the radiometry now atmospheric uh, profile like the pressure atmospheric pressure atmospheric temperature the different water vapor zones which are present in the atmosphere the aerosol type the elevation sun elevation the zenith angle the sun view angle they are all affecting uh, the radiometry of the satellite image so we have to uh, apply certain methods in order to make those corrections so there are two methods through which we can counter effect counteract the effect of atmospheric uh, corrections we can apply some atmospheric correction and whatever is the uh, error which have been introduced by the atmosphere we can actually try to minimize that so one is the simple method which is empirical line correction method and it is short form is elc it is known as elc method uh, very simple in nature and that is why it is called simple method requires very less number of input parameters the second method is a Uh, complex method but it is more accurate complex is, is mathematically requires more number of input parameter and it is computationally is not that efficient as compared to the simple method but as far as the accuracy is concerned we get much more accurate results from the complex method so here in complex method we have to measure certain parameter right in the field we should know the existing atmospheric conditions so these are the two methods available now depending upon our application requirement we will go for these two methods but most popular is a very simple kind of a method which is called empirical line correction method so in the empirical line correction method what we do is when we try to fit in a line between the data sets we have a radiance value on the y axis and we have the uh, l min value on the uh, x axis the minimum reflectance value and the maximum reflectance value so dn value versus the radiance and there is a relationship here this is the relationship which converts actually the dn value into the radiance values so if we plot them we will find that the scene which is affected 
by the atmosphere the origin will not pass through the 0 0 it will not pass through the intersection of both the axis but it will be slightly offset so that offset we have to determine and this offset is very very important and we have to apply this offset actually to all the data so we uh, uh, take the reflectance of the known point so known point could be a point uh, which is giving me very bright reflectance and known point could be that which is giving me very uh, low reflectance dark pixels so i know there are some dark pixels uh, and there are some bright pixels so bright pixels could be snow cover area the dark pixels could be the deep water then and if i take the minimum and the maximum value and try to fit in a line between the two and find out the offset well, how much is the offset how much is the value on the x axis away from the zero value so that particular offset if i subtract from all the values i can apply the atmospheric correction so one can see here that uh, you know with a simple method when the atmospheric correction has been applied to the data then some haziness which is available in my left image so left image certain haziness is present due to the atmosphere actually that has gone into the right image so right image has become much more brighter to me because i have applied the atmospheric correction to this image now this is a complex method and this complex method there are many models in fact available now in the literature so we are here we are discussing the atmospheric radiative transfer model so this is using the scattered model of the atmosphere which is including the gases aerosols the dust particles the diameter of the particles which are present in the atmosphere so this is all become the input to the model so this uh, second model complex model uh, requires large number of input parameter and give very high quality results and you can see here this radiative transfer model there are some actually input requirement like geometric condition what was the geometric condition view angle illumination angle when this image was taken then atmospheric model for the gaseous components that means the Rayleigh scattering which is taking place then uh, h2o ozone aerosol optical depth opacity the, all that data is required then aerosol model which is the my scattering then amount of the dust amount of the soot or salt which is present in the atmosphere then what is the wavelength band and what is the wavelength width of that then the reflectance characteristics of the objects you know which could be used as a reference then surface um, uh, brdf value so this is uh, all that information is input to the complex model and if no information is available because this information will come from the ground when you are analyzing a particular satellite image and this image was taken on a particular day so you have to be out in the field that particular day atmospheric condition meteorological conditions are required and that becomes input to the model but if these uh, informations are not available then there are in standard atmospheric conditions which are considered by the software default values are taken by the software but the, when the software is taking the default value then probably you may not get that accurate result so in order when we are using the complex method and we want to derive very good results then there are field measurements which are required to be carried out now we all know that the sun elevation will affect the quality of the image and this is what it is shown in this that as the sun elevation is changing it is actually changing the quality of the image and particularly when we are talking of the topographical effects in the image so it is actually causing those topographical effects due to the height of the various objects as well as the topography of the ground itself so shadow the shadow length will be much longer when the sun elevation is smaller 
when the sun elevation is larger and larger the shadow becomes smaller and then probably those images are much more useful to me so uh, it also depends upon the elevation of the sun when i am using the images uh, with the features which are present on that slope and aspect effect so topography you know uh, will have certain slope and certain aspect so if the slopes are more then the the object will be in the shadow as you can see in this slide here that there is a solar light which is coming from the left side and the other side of the mountain is in the shadow so it is all hidden part shadow part and the same features which are present on the left side are also present on the right side but they would appear much darker in shade as compared to the left and since we are not manually analyzing these images we are analyzing the digitally them uh, on the basis of the reflectance characteristics and dn values so dn values in this region shadow region will be much smaller as compared to the dn values in the brighter region although the object may be the similar object so there are chances of having error in the classification digital classification so the effect of the slope and effect of the aspect because depending upon the aspect also uh, we can identify which are the uh, sunlit sites and which are the shadow sites so we can remove actually the effect of topography effect of the slope and aspect uh, one of the simple method is the ratio method we are dividing one band with the other another band so when we are doing dividing that uh, two wavelength uh, bands together the output uh, is reducing the shadow to a certain extent so this is one of the ways actually but there are several algorithms available shadow removing algorithms are also there by which we can remove the shadow to a certain extent before doing the classification of the object so this Uh, atmospheric correction has also been done by histogram matching as i have explained you in my uh, previous lecture that you can represent the or you can show the entire data of the image in the form of a histogram dn values on x axis and this occurrence fre frequency on y axis so if i have a standard histogram uh, or the histogram of the calibrated image and i can try to match actually with the actual histogram so histogram matching in digital image processing is another technique where the image which is affected by the radiometry by the atmosphere we'll try to remove that uh, atmospheric effect or apply the corrections by matching the histogram of the image which is not affected by the atmosphere or least affected or which has been corrected properly so that histogram matching is also a uh, quite successful approach while applying the corrections to that so this is the uh, histogram adjustment uh, technique which has been explained and uh, there's a method which is called histogram minimum method is there so we are finding out through the histogram also you know how much is the shift uh, from the uh, zero values so how much is the shift and then try to adjust that particular offset and carry out the histogram adjustment in the data so in case the minimum value is higher the histogram shape will be completely changed in that case as you can see from the previous diagram the shape has completely changed here uh, sometimes in the data we have the stripping effect as you can see uh, in the image you can see some lines scan lines so there is a uh, lining effect stripping effect and this was particularly observed in landsat mss data earlier and what was happen is the sixth uh, there were six detectors in the mss sensor the sixth detector was not actually functioning properly not recording the data properly and we are getting Uh, those line effect in the data so you have to act remove actually that effect you have to make the corrections in the 
image uh, before it is actually used. So, you can see the blow up of a certain portion of the image which is shown on the top. So, one can very clearly see that uh, there is uh, no proper data recording has been done in those every sixth line region. So, the, the, the corrections has been done and the correction very simple technique which was used to apply that kind of a correction is local averaging. So, when you are doing the local averaging what you are doing you are taking the average of the adjacent two lines. So, suppose the sixth line is the drop line then the average of the fifth line and the uh, next line uh, values d n values are taken the adjacent d n values are taken and the averaging is run as is shown in the diagram here. So, averaging is has been replaced by the black lines where there was no recording at all. So, at least there is some data available assuming the homogeneity in the area this particular uh, averaging has been taken and this averaging will bring out actually uh, very good histogram and uh, also one can see the uh, image which has the lines here one can see lots of lots of lines in this image and then this correction has been done by doing simple averaging of the uh, pixels which are present in the adjacent lines. Then line dropped, so some lines were dropped by the earlier sensors while scanning mechanism was used. So, that is also removed by taking some kind of a uh, averaging. So, you can see that uh, mean of uh, pixels have been taken example is shown here that there is a line drop out. So, there are all the pixels are 0 values while the adjacent pixels have the values associated with it. So, if we take the mean of several pixels together and what we assume is that the missing values are also the same as the surrounding values or the surrounding features. Then using this concept we can actually apply the corrections to the data and top one is the image where corrections are to be applied and the bottom one is the image where all the corrections have been applied. So, due to the characteristic of the sensors we can apply the correction. Hage reduction has also been carried out and this is the algorithm for hage reduction here. So, this when the atmosphere is hazy the brightness of the image will be affected. So, you will not have the bright image and uh, the features may not be very very clear to you because of the uh, effect of the hage. So, that can be removed and you can brighten the image as you can see in the image here the left side is the image which is affected by the hage. So, the objects are not very clear or the terrain is not clearly seen now, but when you are applying the corrections to the image now that that hage effect is gone and one can see the landscape and the terrain very clearly. So, identification of the object becomes much more clear. So, this hage reduction methods are also available. Now, on radiometry what is the effect of the atmosphere? We have seen the atmosphere is playing a very very big role whether we are talking of the atmospheric pressure, temperature or the gases, the molecules, particle, the solar zenith angle they are all actually uh, affecting the radiometry of the image. Particularly uh, you know it is important whenever we are talking of the hyperspectral images. We have narrow bandwidths, we have several images in the hyperspectral data. So, bandwidth is typically 10 uh, nanometer or less. So, corrections uh, are required to be combined so that uh, you can actually use these hyperspectral images along with the other data sets. You can combine them, fuse them either with the Landsat or the high spot data sensors. There are some challenges when you are carrying out the uh, atmospheric modeling and particularly if you are using the simple method. Uh, you require only the uh, pixels which are bright pixels the d n value and uh, dark pixels d n value in the image which is to be corrected. So, that is a very simple approach, but when you want to apply the complex model there are changes involved and when you want to do quantitative studies with the multiple satellite images then again 
in such a study you have to consider applying the corrections because the atmosphere or the illumination or the sensor characteristics will affect different images. So, the your quantitative data may be affected due to that. Now, there are very large number of models which are available to us. It can provide you the results, but they require certain input. They can provide you good results uh, with the atmospheric effects, but what they require? They require lot of knowledge of the sensor calibration parameter. They are require lot of atmospheric input parameters. So, atmospheric water, vapor, aerosols, molecular composition at that time when the image was taken. So, at that day of image acquisition one has to be in the field collecting those atmospheric data, collecting those meteorological data and the sensor characteristics are required and then becomes this becomes input to the complex model. So, this complex model in addition to uh, requirement data in lot, lot of input data requirement they are computationally also not very effective. They are very complex and uh, sometimes you know what we do is we are using the complex model and because of the non availability of the correct input data again we are making certain assumptions and uh, using some kind of a default values in order to correct those images. So, these are some of the challenges involved when we are using more and more complex models. So, this is all about thank you very much.